It's my pleasure to welcome to the SIMSIAD series on blockchain, uh, Dr. Sahail Munir. Uh, he is an advisor for emerging technologies and digital transformation at Smart Dubai. Hello. Welcome. Thank and, you, Dr. Uh, Andrew. Blockchain seems to be an important technology for Dubai, both for the government and for the local businesses. Would you please tell us why? So, Dubai government is basically looking at a completely digitally transformed government. Uh, for us, uh, government basically is a service uh, delivers services to its constituents, uh, be it the residents in the city of Dubai, be it the businesses. So, in a way, government is a service provider. You know, we have estimated by that by 2021, with these, uh, you know, with the current way of doing things, we are talking about over a billion pieces of paper that will be consumed uh, by this. You have to get your driver's license, you have to buy land, you know, rent an apartment, there are contracts to be signed, uh, there is rental agreements to be signed, uh, that is all paper. So a billion uh, pieces of paper would equate to about 130,000 trees. And I don't know if you're counting, uh, the two days you have been here, I don't know if that is more than the number of trees we have in Dubai right now. I haven't seen that many trees. <laughs> exactly. So now when we look at blockchain, so you know that's the objective. Yeah. to be a completely digitally transformed city. The government should be completely digitally transformed. Services delivered to the constituents should be completely seamless and frictionless. Okay. So now blockchain is one of the key enablers, building blocks. We are looking at emerging technologies like blockchain and AI, and of course cloud computing. Uh, we, yes, we see that as major building blocks uh, in making this dream come true. We looked at the services that the government of Dubai is delivering, uh, we kind of segmented that into maybe 11 or 12 segments. Uh, uh, real estate was a segment, uh, healthcare is a sector, uh, tourism would be a segment. And for each of these segments, we brought in all of the applicable, all of these stakeholders. Uh, we got them together. We ex you know, kind of helped uh, create an environment where they understand what is possible with blockchain. We kind of facilitated that, that, facilitated that discussion. Uh, we did some design thinking sessions with them. And we identified uh, the major use cases, the most impactful use cases. Right. And then the next step was to now actually uh, help uh, deliver these use cases with the stakeholders. So, uh, you know, the Department of uh, Land uh, will be responsible for the real estate related sector. They would front and spearhead it and lead it, but then we would be providing support. Uh, so that was kind of how we started this journey. So looking at some of these use cases, uh, one of the use cases which a lot of other governments actually is also working on, is this life cycle, end to end life cycle of property. Okay, so real estate. Uh, of real estate for yeah. that matter. So. There is a parcel of land that is allocated. Uh, there is zoning that happens. Once zoning happens, that land is probably sold to a developer. Developer creates a master plan, gets it approved from someone. Uh, after that, uh, property is built. Uh, you know, there are houses and apartments or buildings, whatever. And eventually those are sold. Before they are sold, a developer is developing. So maybe uh, you are putting some down payment and an escrow is required. So a bank or somebody comes in as an escrow agent. Uh, eventually the, the, apart, the property is handed over to you. Uh, you may be selling it, you may be renting it, or you may be doing an Airbnb transaction for that matter. So this is the end-to-end -end life cycle uh, of, a, of, of real estate. That is a very ideal use case to bring it on blockchain. Uh, add more interesting, innovative ideas to it. What if we bring in uh, uh, fractional ownership into this equation? Right. So now you would say that if you just take this life cycle of a real estate, you would say that why is blockchain needed? Uh, you may have digitized land records. Great, that is possible. Uh, but you know, once you actually create efficiency with these multiple stakeholders, then a lot of new um, other business models will evolve, which blockchain will support. Uh, crowdsourcing or fractional ownership is one example. Um, I currently was working with some students and we thought of a business model 
where we said, okay, uh, we have uh, low wage earners, people who are blue collar workers uh, in the city. Uh, they want to do some savings. They certainly are seeing that the real estate market you know, provides a great opportunity, but they can't even imagine or dream about purchasing a property, right? right. But they certainly would love to benefit from this uh, economy and the, uh, the promise that the Dubai economy uh, has. How do they do that? Yeah. So one of my students came up with the idea, what if we provide a saving opportunity where we do fractional ownership for these blue collar workers? So fine, they cannot afford a $1 million apartment, but uh, they are each saving 5,000 or 4,000 or $3,000. What if they have ownership of one one thousandth of an apartment uh, and it is democratized, they can sell it whenever uh, the 500 owners of that apartment can decide do they want to sell it or rent it. If it is being rented or somebody is managing an Airbnb for it and money is coming in so it is flowing uh, to each and every one of their wallets. Uh, very interesting use case for blockchain. So, really so democratizing ownership. So in a way what is happening is new business models will work. So the first step is when you look at blockchain, you uh, say, how do I create efficiency in my current service delivery? I have multiple stakeholders. I do not want to send that person to 10 different offices or they, uh, you know, eliminate the, any fraud, somebody's doctoring any document or anything like that. So I bring everything on one blockchain. There is a single source of truth, a single version of truth, I should say. Uh, I have uh, all of the data, all of the transactions are happening instantaneously. Mm -hmm. So that's one part, you create efficiency. So we have to understand that blockchain does not make things cheaper. Uh, there are multiple stakeholders involved. Implementation becomes expensive. Uh, more importantly, the biggest pain is not technology. The biggest pain in this particular case is multiple stakeholders. So, uh, Consortium agreement becomes probably one of the most challenging things. Uh, who does what? What are the governing principles? What are the policies? What would be the membership policy? What would be the security policy? Uh, more interestingly, most of the blockchain use cases that you will see will become much richer and will be enriched when you bring in additional stakeholders. So let's say I am doing a use case for paperless property rental in Dubai. I have one bank and maybe one real estate entity uh, to be my initial partners who are coming in and building this with me. And slowly and gradually, in order to make this uh, use case much richer, I am going to bring in probably all banks in the market. I will bring in all developers in the market. So the bank and the developer who has initially invested with me, uh, were they good Samaritans? <laughs> or what is their interest into this, right? they would have a vested interest to have some benefit out of it. Now this becomes a very interesting challenge. Uh, on one hand, you want all stakeholders. On the other hand, your pioneers have to be protected. What's the solution for that? So, you know, these becomes more challenging questions that needs to be addressed. So it sounds like blockchain was developed as a technology, and especially Bitcoin, to replace governments. And uh, now <laughs> governments are finding very valid uh, use cases to use not certainly Bitcoin, but blockchain or distributed ledgers to create more value in the society and serve their constituents more effectively. So, uh, you know, one application of blockchain is where uh, a central entity in a way is replaced, right? Uh, not replaced, but is in a way is disrupted. Right. Uh, so, and the technology certainly has potential to disrupt the disruptors. Yeah. So, Uber disrupted, uh, eliminated the middleman from taxi service, and now blockchain has a potential to disrupt Uber in a way. Absolutely. Where if uh, you know Tesla creates a blockchain platform. The entire life cycle of a car is there on that blockchain. So the last part of it, which is rental or short term, you know, ride hailing part, can also be implemented on that blockchain. So yes, there's that potential of disrupting the disruptors here. What the current technology has done is to make these distributed ledgers uh, much more available, uh, technologically viable, and that's what we're using. So there is certainly value that distributed ledgers going to the table. Uh, in a lot of enterprise use cases. 
Excellent. So for me, one of the biggest learnings uh, from this conference and from this conversation as well is that we really should not start from the question, where can I use blockchain? Mm -hmm. The question should probably be, what is the problem that the blockchain can help us solve? And you, Dr. Andrew, I mean, you know more the better than I do in this. The first question always is going to be, what is the problem that needs a solution, right? Yeah. Where is the pain? Where is the pain and how do you turn this into Precisely. Value? So, um, I have seen some uh, discussions and research on the topic where people are saying, how do I address design thinking differently when in case of uh, when there is a blockchain uh, part of it. So should I start with the notion that I have multiple nodes and who are those nodes? And when I'm doing design thinking, maybe I start with that notion. And so and there's a lot of literature in that space. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly it uh, enables new possibilities. Yeah. But uh, my solution is that, we, especially in my line of business as government, we are looking at service delivery, yeah. right? So service delivery always starts from where is the pain and what, could, what pain could be solved. Um, AI, blockchain are my tools amongst other tools. Uh, as I say, currently the most popular tools are the ABCDs, yeah. AI, blockchain, cloud computing and data science. So these are the most popular tools right now and each of them has a major role to solve uh, these service delivery problems right now. So we certainly uh, are looking at where the pain is, what needs to be solved, and blockchain provides you uh, an interesting solution. Uh, without a blockchain, tokenization becomes difficult, as I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, provenance, looking at provenance uh, becomes difficult. Uh, yes, there are ways of going there, but blockchain makes it much easier and much more seamless. So in my opinion, so in any of the innovative governments which are now looking at government digital transformation, uh, blockchain is certainly one key tool that they would be looking at. Thank you. That's a very comprehensive answer. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm looking forward to learning more about the implementation of blockchain and AI in Dubai. And uh, hopefully we could have this conversation in a year to 18 months to see where these initiatives materialize. Certainly. Look forward to do that. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you very much.